he realized it couldn't live without nature, it made a pact with the animals. He promised to protect turtles, corals, and monkeys in earthly paradises that would be called national parks. In return, the animals would leave humanity free to come and admire them. Off the coast of Thailand lies an archipelago of 42 islands, a jewel among jewels that stretches over 100 square kilometers. Mukho Ang Tong National Park. For the 40 rangers who protect the park, the day begins as it does every morning, with a prayer and the raising of the flag. Rituals are important here. The rangers live together 24 hours a day all year long, far from the rest of the world in their archipelago paradise. So each morning, they discuss the jobs to be done and the conflicts to be resolved. It's their way of strengthening the group's bonds, working together to protect nature more effectively. All are fascinated by the beauty and natural wealth of the Eden they help to conserve. is usually signaled by cracking sounds in the branches. They're langur monkeys. Langur means long-tailed. They use their tails to balance as they jump amazing distances. Their faces seem to be painted or made up, giving them a very curious, clown-like appearance. Of course, these jungle jesters occasionally struggle with their run-up before a breathtaking leap. This one is having problems deciding exactly how to take off. Sometimes, there's a glimpse of something strange through the greenery. Where did the little orange tail come from? a baby born just a few weeks ago. Nature has given him a bright orange coat, making it easier for his mother to see him through the leaves. A few kilometers away, the rangers are starting work near the beach.
Today's assignment will take them down into the underwater world of the park. The rangers here are mainly divers, toilers of the sea, sailors. Their leader, Aria, is taking them to the site of today's operations. We have a problem with this boy. The rope's too long. Dive first and then bring it up to cut the rope and get a new one ready. The ropes are attached to the boys that boats carrying tourists moor to. Visitors flock to the park every day. In this particular area, the rangers have noticed the ropes are a little too long and worn. They must be replaced to make sure that boats don't float away from their assigned positions. Results? Depth? 10 meters. 10 meters depth? The state of the rope? The state of the rope is OK. It needs cleaning. Keeping the rope in good condition will help to conserve the undersea ecosystem. The rangers will shorten it to make sure boats don't drift towards areas rich in coral. The rangers aren't alone in protecting the zone and its seabed resources. Today we're going to get you to do a little bit of substrate practice again, but I also want you to try out some of the coral genre. So I'd like you guys to go with Chad the is EMP American. Slate e. um, we'll go and He's lay been out in love with this park in time seven years ago. He now works on Kotao Island, the, the, the a few miles from Mukong Tong, and, then we'll do and knows just how fertile the, the seabed is there. The line there. Okay. He shares his great passion with his students. Um, and then next time we'll be taking the data for you. Chad's students come from all over the world. This is a famous destination for divers mainly because of its fine coral reefs. The plunge into the depths brings a moment of grace and poetry. Creatures that populate this underwater world move in a ballet that would enchant any diver. Chad and his students are not just there to admire the marine life, they are also keen to protect the environment. Chad knows how vulnerable and endangered the coral is. The coral polyp populations are declining each day, and with them, the fauna and the fragile balance of this fabulous ecosystem. So Chad encourages his students to help protect this marine treasure trove so dear to his heart. There's plenty of magic away from the waves too. This little lango monkey was born just a few weeks ago. Even so, he's old enough to be jealous of his fellows, who can already leap from branch to branch. 
He's still a little clumsy, but his mother is there to watch over him. His mother, or actually his mother's. Little langurs are generally born in the rainy season, and the entire community looks after them, especially for the first two months of their lives, when their orange coat is a focus of attention for the whole troop, reminding them how important it is to keep an eye on the little scamps. Mukong Tong Rangers spend their days patrolling the park. Today something has caught their eye. Fishing boats moored within the park perimeter. Fishing is forbidden here. Still, the rangers need to show tact and circumspection as they check to find out whether the intruders are guilty of any misdemeanors. After introducing themselves, Aria and his men start by inspecting the boat. Surprisingly, they're not looking for fish. Poachers here are after a very different game. I've been informed that someone was here to catch birds. Is it your captain? My captain? No, that's not possible. He's elderly and respectable. I heard there were orders from Malaysia. Wild birds fetch a good price there. More than $330. If you see anything suspicious, let me know. Okay, absolutely. I will be sure to do that. Right, thanks. Everything's in order this time but Aria knows he has to stay on his guard. He's lived on these islands for 30 years, his entire career as a ranger. He loves the park, is familiar with all its treasures, and would do anything to protect it. The sun sets over Mukoang Tong. The rangers have finished patrolling for the day, and it's time for a little rest and recreation. Sipak Takro, a kind of ball game played over a net, is very popular here. In Mukoang Tong, traditions are passed on from one generation of rangers to the next, and Aria is glad of that. day begins on Kopaluai. It's one of the park's 42 islands, but is slightly different from the others. It's home to a community of fishermen. Hey. Chai is one of the island's personalities. A former fisherman, he's now keen to promote green, eco-responsible tourism. Chai sets off for a morning fishing expedition with his old friend Dol. There are only 400 islanders, so they're all more or less cousins. The fishing begins. The sea is calm and the weather is good. Chai and Dole know that wherever they drop their nets, 
they'll come up full. This traditional fishing is only done to feed the island's inhabitants and doesn't endanger the park's ecosystem. Do you think you'll catch a lot of fish today? Oh yeah, a lot of fish. Oh, We're going to have a great lunch. Again today, they had no trouble finding fish. Chai and his friend Dol can take their catch home. Here, fishing is central to the lives of the population as a whole. Hi, how is it going? That's nice looking great. Good work. And how are you, little one? Did you already eat? Yes, I hit it. <laughs> <laughs> These fishermen do things the old way, yet they've already adopted some aspects of modern life in their everyday lives, such as these solar panels. Here, only renewable energy is used, solar and wind. That's one of the basic rules of life on Koparoi. It's a way of conserving the exceptional beauty of the island where small communities of monks regularly come to pray. <laughs> We're back on Kotao Island home of the New Heaven Diving School where Chad works. It's an alternative kind of school that involves its students in park conservation. One of its projects is turtle protection. So you want to support the whole body and if they start kicking a lot just try to don't be alarmed. They can't hurt you or, or bite you or anything so don't get scared. Hold them slightly up like this, head up, not head down. These turtles are endangered. So to increase their numbers, Chad and his team gather their eggs. They raise the turtles away from predators and release them into the sea when they have a better chance of survival. But that's not all. Chad also builds structures to provide support for coral. Artificial coral reefs that he and his team install on the seabed. Tong's 42 islands hold many jewels. Aria knows this. To further increase his colleagues' awareness, he's taking them to Kusam Sao, the first island where he worked as a young ranger. beautifully conserved. At the time, life was very hard for the champions of nature working on Kosam Sao. Today, Aria is worried about his island and the undersea world around it. Welcome, welcome. When I came here, 
There was nothing, just a little house and two aluminium water tanks. I know it's possible to plant coral. What I like is for the tourists who visit the park to help grow coral. They could buy equipment and lend a hand. They could give five dollars each. Like a donation. Yes, and it would be good for promoting tourism. A tourist who planted coral in Thailand in Mukho and Thong could come back and see if the coral grew. That way, they'd come back and see us. And then you can come up by Hinnam Reef if you like. It's not just the rangers who are keen on replanting coral. Chad has been doing it with his students for years. The students choose this diving destination because of their commitment to and love of the undersea world. Off Kotao Island, They've set up two sites for the installation of artificial coral reefs. These coral nurseries are regularly cleaned to deny the small starfish that feed on coral polyps any chance to feed. fauna is gradually returning. Because the coral polyps are builders whose colonies provide shelter for many fish. Fish, and also turtles, who come to feed here. They too are in danger. Their numbers are falling. The work of Chad, his teams, and all the other protectors of this extraordinary site gives these animals a chance. It also gives people a chance to continue to admire their beauty and elegance as they dance beneath the waves. The people of Kopalwai Island know that the future belongs to the young. At the local school, they teach the pupils how to become tomorrow's ambassadors. Can you explain how to clean solar panels? To clean solar panels? First, you use a damp cloth. Then you wipe them with a dry cloth. You have to do that very regularly. Tourists will be coming here soon. You will need to give them advice about the beauties of Kau Pau. What will you suggest? I'll tell them to go to Bay 5 because you see the most beautiful sunrises there. The children have been taught about different kinds of alternative energies. They'll welcome the first tourists to visit Kopalwai. Opening up the island to visitors while continuing to protect it is quite a challenge, but one they already seem ready to take on. Okay, okay well done, you are awesome. Thanks very much. In conclusion, the children perform a song they wrote about their island. As night falls over the park, the monkeys look for their spot in the treetops. They always return to the same tree for the night. The mothers hold their infants close. 
When the babies stir, they stroke them until they fall asleep again, lulled by the soft breeze that blows over the islands of Mukuang Tong. <laughs> <laughs> 